and FedEx 1776 is here on our final approach for uh, Papa Hotel November Lima, uh, <clears throat> Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, we are intercepting, tra uh, we are, uh, sorry, landing 08 left via the Alana transition. We are on our way right now, uh, about 32 nautical miles, 30, yeah, about 32 nautical miles, 10 minutes to go. Uh, we are at 03,000. Uh, we have reduced speed to 180 knots, and uh, we will be testing <coughs> a function of this new plane that we just got, this 737-800 uh, that we have. Uh, the maker has uh, in endowed it with the ability to land itself, uh, for the most part, with some oversight and some guidance by me. We're going to give that a shot. And then I'm going to upload it to the YouTubes. So let's see how this auto land feature actually works. <clears throat> because they actually advertise it as a legit auto land. And they're, they're, I've heard debates about whether or not planes can actually auto land themselves. There's no such thing as auto land, guys. Maybe not in real planes, but in this one. We are also tuned to Unicom at 122.8 in the Eastern Ops server. Uh, only one other person in here with me, and they were in here last night when I logged off. <clears throat> uh, no traffic in the area this morning. Actually, for a cleaner transition, we're going to alter our course heading here. And so, course heading three ones at left turn. Uh, let's see, three one zero should put us a little bit that should give us a little bit more time before we intercept localizer but it should give us a chance to line up with it so we're just straight shot right to it don't have to bank or angle or anything like that at the last minute Oh good, and I think Alana is going to give us a hard left turn right after we intercept it. Shit. Alright, so we have landing lights on. Let's see here. Yeah. Looks like where everything is set for landing.
strange. Alright, we're making our right turn to intercept transition point Alana. This plane only wants to make half banks, which is usually great because I, I hate having to control the bank of my plane uh, when it's set to autopilot. But this plane is as frustrating as it can be when you need to bank harder, uh, even a little bit harder. It will only go to half. This is about as good a bank as I've seen it make, an actual 10 degree bank, looks like. Like we got some guys gathering in Europe. Turn heading 030 and we'll try to intercept Alana on our own. <clears throat> From there we can activate the autopilot and it can take us in on our approach. See, we'll turn that off so it's not beeping in our ear. Over the airport, we 
were in a holding pattern for around 30 minutes or more before we eventually were able to begin our descent. And now the sun, is that a sunrise or is that a glare for my... Oh no, look at that, it's a sunrise. So the sun's coming up in Hawaii, it's 8.10 here Pacific time. So, uh, 7.06, so it's just turning 6 o'clock there, so the sun is rising in Hawaii. Looks like in about 15 seconds we'll be able to begin our turn.
1776 is tuned into uh, Eham Tower uh, Echo Hotel Alpha Mike uh, tuned his other radio to uh, Eham and it is hilarious already <laughs> there's some pilots in there that I <clears throat> I fly with or communicate with on a pretty regular basis and that was hilarious that was, I hope that's not my runway there's no freaking way. There's n no. There's literally no way. Uh. Okay, no, not the same airport. That scared me. Never done the Alana approach before. try this. We're all going to enjoy an outside view of the plane and see if this auto land feature is legitimately an auto land feature. We're going to be watching everything that this does. 2500. FedEx 1776 on final four runway zero eight left.
400. It's flaring 40, by itself. 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, 10. Touchdown. Reverse thrust. No freaking way. No freaking way. Oh my god. Oh my god. It freaking does everything for you. Localizer to land. Well, I highly recommend everybody uh, still uh, uses FSX regularly to take a... Just, I'll just leave the link in the description of the video. So that is what this plane can do on its own. So let's hop in the cockpit in just a minute and see where we're at. I got a ground speed of 40 knots right now and decreasing. So, let's hop into the cockpit. This is tower view. Uh, some random view from somewhere on the island. And cockpit view. Let's get rid of this fucking Morse code first. <coughs> Jesus. Oh, and it even turned my landing lights off for me. My taxi lights aren't working, so I'm going to need those. And look at that. Flaps are totally retracted. Autopilot, auto, uh, auto throttle, all off. My goodness. This thing even kept us at a rolling taxi. So we didn't come to a, fuck a dead stop on the runway. Look at that. So I'm applying thrust now. And we're going to taxi off this runway to the main terminal there. Actually, to that secondary hangar off over there. Amazing, ten out of ten. I'm an I'm a you know virtual Airbus pilot. I have a preference for everything Airbus <clears throat> compared to Boeing, but uh, I have flied the seven three, the seven eight. Um, this is the best variant of the seven three seven that I have found so far. Uh, that's a really nice capability to have auto land, especially at night. I kind of dread flying at night or in stormy conditions because I can't see anything. At least when it's foggy, I, I'm perfectly capable of doing regular uh, ILS landings, uh, but ILS still involves a lot of work, and if, it's, if the visibility is absolutely nil, uh, that's an awesome landing feature to have, auto land. <clears throat> Especially if, if you can see absolutely nothing in that I remember seeing a flight, something, a video on the flight channel on YouTube about a plane that crashed not long ago. Maybe it was recent. Maybe it was a couple of years ago. And when they went through a cloud, and they came out, they thought that they were was it? They thought that they were ascending, so they cut the path. They almost put it to idle to try to descend, but they were already descending, and that just put them at a stall. Oh no, it was the other way around. They thought they were descending, so they pulled back and put the nose up, and that put it into a stall, and then they just crashed into the ground. I, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but it, it, it was caused by some sort of disorientation because there was no lights, no reference point for the pilots to see because it was so dark. <clears throat> and I've had that things like that happen to me, so it's reassuring knowing that if I'm flying this plane and I can see absolutely nothing, or I'm having an issue with an ILS landing, that I can just set it to that as an absolute fallback uh, in an emergency. It's like one more safety net that I have. It's like, okay, if I can't do a visual, I can fall back on the ILS. If I can't get the ILS for some reason, I can't intercept the glide slope because my instruments or whatever, I can you know, enter a holding pattern, try again, and just activate auto land and see if that'll do it. Because yesterday I was having instrument issues in my 787. 
and it wouldn't intercept glide slope. I went around two times, still wouldn't intercept glide slope, and I ended up crashing right off of the runway. My tail basically would have been ripped right off the plane, and everyone in the aft of the plane would have died. All right, so that's the uh, Boeing 737-800 from, uh, I don't know how it's pronounced, Riku, Riku? I always pronounce it Riku. Uh, <clears throat> fantastic plane. It obviously is uh, draws from the default cockpits and everything like that. Um, they actually give you 180 different skins. Uh, including all of the <clears throat> a remake of all of the default planes so you'll have the Janet uh, f plane you'll have the uh, all the default airliners and you'll have the decommissioned aircraft as well as a hundred and something other 170 something other skins and uh, you got FedEx DHL and uh, UPS is three of those so that's it's nice to have cargo options, especially since uh, in the Eastern Hop server we had a holiday freight frenzy where you could only use cargo aircraft, uh, prop or jet, didn't matter. Um, so, and this is freeware. Um, payware often will crash games for myself or for other people, so I try to stay with, with freeware and with with Riku you, you always have, um, they have an installer that does everything for you, no copying and pasting into aircraft files or CFG files, anything like that. Uh, FedEx 1776 crossing 22 left via Charlie. Um, so, and they're they're frequently checked for viruses or or any malware, anything like that. So, uh, really great site to get it from. I've never had an issue with any of their. I've had one issue with any of their downloads out of like maybe. Eight that I've done. Uh, FedEx 1776 crossing 22 right via Alpha. Uh, so, you know, the 7, I think it was the 747 200 is the only aircraft I've had an issue with. And that was a developer issue, not a Riku issue. Because <clears throat> I could start everything up and it just, the engines would be running, but it wouldn't respond to my throttle. Wouldn't respond to any of my commands. So, <clears throat> uh, 747 MD-11's garbage, but in any case, um, definitely a pack worth installing here, uh, the 737-800 with the 180 skins, definitely worth it, um, especially if what you care about are the features of the aircraft, because this has uh, two key features that set it apart, as well as the FMC, so I guess three. Um, and then the Boeing 787 uh, Dreamliner, uh, what is it, the, f the Mega Pack from Riku, also the other, uh, only other Boeing that I've found that I actually enjoy flying. Um, other than that, their entire series of uh, the Airbus Mega Packs and Family Packs are what I have installed, <clears throat> and they're all great. So I'd, I'd give this... Uh, a 10 out of 10, even though the 7.8 is a 10 out of 10. This being able to land itself um, makes up for what it lacks in the uh, like revamped GPS that the 7.8 has that can <clears throat> basically stre they streamline the GPS in that uh, it acts as like a radar. It acts a, it has a secondary radar on board just like the ATC radar. Um, it can tune your ILS and activate your approach all from the GPS. You don't even need to touch your radio stack in the 787. So that's the selling point for that. And then you have this, which has its own individual selling points with the FMC and the auto land feature. So both, both planes with pros and cons, both amazing Boeings. Uh, <clears throat> both have features that I've never seen an Airbus have. And I believe this is compatible with uh, other uh, flight simulators. So, and we are arriving here at our 
FedEx facility in Honolulu. at our facility in Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii! Oh, God. Need more coffee. We have arrived at our destination in Honolulu, Hawaii, FedEx facility. We're going to begin shutting the aircraft down. Oh, look at that. The auto land even turned off our strobe when we touched down on the runway. God, what an awesome system. Killing engine one. Engine one at point five percent. And killing engine two. I keep wanting to retract flaps, but it did it for me. All right. Now looks like we're good. We're good. We're good. Alright, <clears throat> and we have fully shut down our Boeing 737.